Why do players not want to share the court with Kyrie Irving? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the four cons of being on the same team as Kyrie Irving. Arguably the biggest con with having Kyrie Irving on your team is his injury history. When signing a player or looking at your entire roster, the one thing that is needed from a player or teammate is continuity. Irving is constantly battling various injuries and taking extended absences from the team. This makes it incredibly difficult for the other players on the roster to depend on him as their franchise leader and best player. So when he misses tons of time throughout the length of a season and then demands the ball when he returns, it causes a lot of friction between members of the roster and can put the entire organization on edge. While injuries aren't something that Irving is able to stop from happening, it does raise a very big question for the teams that make the jump and sign him to a long-term deal. He's missed around 21 games a year on average and has only played 488 out of his first 656 games in the league. That was due in part to numerous knee surgeries that have held him out for extended periods of time. And that inconsistency hurts a team in the long run, especially if you're a superstar player like Irving is on the court. But knee surgeries aren't the only thing holding out this fantastic player, as he has hurt his face, shoulder, quad, hip, back, and thigh throughout his time with the Boston Celtics and Cleveland Cavaliers, along with a toe injury that took him out during his college days, and an eye injury that held him out for some time as well. His inability to stay healthy has brought up the old slogan, your best ability is availability, something that many coaches and organizations live by, and that's especially true in this case with Irving. As I mentioned earlier though, these injuries are no fault of Irving's, it's simply just the way that he goes about the game of basketball. Unfortunately, the aggressive nature that he dribbles and drives on causes collisions down in the paint and they lead to injuries at times. Having an injury prone player on your team isn't necessarily a good thing regardless of how amazing he is on the basketball court. Next, his leadership is among the worst in the league when talking about star players. Throughout his years as a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers, he had the benefits of playing with arguably the greatest player of all time in LeBron James. Not only did James take pressure off of him while on the court, he also took the responsibility of leading the roster and managing the egos of the members of the team. When Irving finally demanded a trade a few years back, he stated that he wanted to have his own team that he can lead and take to the promised land. The only problem with that is that he wasn't able to lead them, and it seemed like he didn't want to. He was dealt to the Boston Celtics after his trade request, but didn't seem like he was teaching any of the young players anything during his time there. He missed an extended period of time with multiple injuries throughout his years there, while also questioning the mentality of their young guys who have since turned out to be stars, such as Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Terry Rozier. Each of these guys were in their first or second years with the roster and looked to Irving for help in their game and needed him for his leadership and experience. Irving ended up doing the opposite by saying this after a loss. The young guys don't know what it takes to be a championship level team, what it takes every day. And if they think it's hard now, what do they think it will be like when we are trying to get to the finals? Now, if I was the leader of a team and the face of their franchise, this is not a quote that I would want to put out there about the guys I share a court with. You need chemistry and trust between the five men that are on the floor at all times. And when your leader begins spouting these types of quotes out, it definitely drives a wedge in that trust and makes a lot of the younger guys question their roles on the roster. Another con would be his unpredictability overall. Kyrie Irving is a very closed off guy with a lot of thoughts and emotions just like the rest of us, but he often makes impulse decisions that could hurt a team if you are depending on him to be there each and every day. The most recent example of this situation would be this past season with the Brooklyn Nets as he sat out one of their games without any explanation. Their head coach Steve Nash was asked relentlessly about his absence during the game with the coach only stating, Kyrie Irving just didn't feel like playing. I don't know about you, but if I was paying a guy millions of dollars to play on my team and lead my roster to a championship, the last thing I want to hear is that you sat out of a game simply because you didn't want to play. This is a bad look for their team because there are a ton of hard workers and other NBA players out there that are fighting for their chance on the court. Meanwhile, Irving is taking days off just because he wants to. A few days after this happened, he was caught on video partying with his family without a mask on, something that clearly breaks the NBA's COVID-19 protocols that were implemented throughout the end of last season and all of this season. One of Irving's former teammates on the Cavaliers, Richard Jefferson, went on television to state his displeasure for Irving and how selfish his actions have been lately, reminding people that a fellow NBA player, Carl Anthony Towns, had lost his mother and father due to COVID implications 
and that for Irving to party with his family without a mask, then just jump right back onto the court, was unfair for guys like Towns. Jefferson wrapped up his rant by reaching out to Irving and letting him know that it was okay for him to walk away from the game of basketball. He said that himself and others will support his decision and that he isn't going to be forced to stay in this league. It's yet to be known if Irving has any plans on leaving the Nets and heading into early retirement, but that level of unpredictability is definitely something that you wouldn't want from your star player. Being constantly worried that he's going to leave your roster and turn your team from a championship contender to a fringe playoff team simply shouldn't happen. Many organizations and players around the league prefer their players to be upfront with them and explain their situations and their decisions in advance to avoid this type of thing. It can also give the wrong impression when your teammates find out that you simply don't want to play a certain game, or if they're spending all this time working with a player that's going to leave them when they need him most. As fantastic of a player that Irving is, nobody wants to share the court with a guy that's wildly unpredictable. His ego is among the worst cons about him as a player, according to a few anonymous NBA players that have shared a team with Irving. It ended up being recognized as a Celtics player, with him stating, Everyone respects his talent, but he's hard to play with. It's all about him. This is definitely not something I would want one of the players on my roster saying about a guy I traded quite a lot for. It gave a bad look to the organization and a bad look for the players and coaching staff that seemingly allowed this sort of behavior around the team. Couple this with the fact that he wanted his own team, and you have yourself a guy that is seeking attention and credit after being named a number two on a championship roster next to LeBron James. There were also statements that Irving made regarding the most clutch players, as he said that he's never played with a guy that is exceptional at putting away ball games in the clutch. Yes, this is from the guy that shared a team with LeBron James for multiple seasons. Irving put himself in that elite closer category, along with friend and now teammate Kevin Durant. Either Irving doesn't understand the situations he puts himself in with his statements, or he just doesn't care. Regardless, he's going to need to settle down and start to become a role model for young players out there that look up to him. If he isn't able to do that, then there's another reason as to why players around the league see him as the bad guy in the NBA. Although now that we've covered all the bad aspects of having Irving as a teammate, let's take a look at his insane numbers on the court. He won an NBA championship with James in Cleveland back in the 2015-2016 season. He's made the All-Star Game six different times and even won the All-Star Game MVP award in 2014. He was the Rookie of the Year in 2011-2012 and made four different All-NBA teams. He's been able to accomplish all of this while only playing in the league for 10 seasons, as he still has a lot of time left in his career if he's able to get his mind and body right and continue forward. This season, in only 10 games played, Irving has averaged 29.3 points per game, 4.6 rebounds per game, and 5.8 assists per game with the Brooklyn Nets. Looking purely at these statistics, he's having one of the best seasons in his career so far, even though this is a very small sample size. Irving is still an excellent basketball player in this league, and has all the talent in the world to bring a championship to this Nets roster. He just needs to understand his situation and voice and begin to settle into his leadership role far better than what he has in recent years. Thank you everybody so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content that you don't want to miss.